space exploration is advancing rapidly. Within the last century, we have launched the first rocket, sent a man to the moon, and explored distant planets. Though these soaring advancements come with some moments of confusion, be it from an old photograph, an unexpected discovery or a strange occurrence. NASA is at the forefront of astronomical developments and missions, and over the years they've made countless discoveries, helping us to better understand what's out there in the cosmos. One thing that they're often faced with is the constant reports of strange objects seen close to the International Space Station, and although they have commented that some of these can be explained away as things like space debris, planets and satellites, there's some that they've remained quiet about. Back in 2016, someone was watching the live cameras from the International Space Station, and they noticed something strange in the background. The object, which was described by the individual as looking like a ship, allegedly approached the space station before the cameras were shut off. Amateur researchers who have looked into these accounts have said this often happens when a strange object approaches the International Space Station. Although NASA has said the reason this happens is because the signal drops, which then causes the video feed to cut out. Regardless, the individual was quickly able to take a screenshot of what they were seeing, and since then different theories have been put forward to try and explain what this thing is. It's actually a pretty clear photograph, and we're able to make out various different things. For example, it looks like this thing has arms coming off it, while others described it as being in the shape of a star. Skeptics have said the object likely has a more earthly origin, and suggested it could have been something like a satellite. NASA said that it's space debris, and that when these objects approach the space station they can take on a different appearance. Believers have said that hundreds of these objects have been reported close to the International Space Station, saying that they come in all shapes and sizes. Another one that they've said NASA has been silent on is that of a giant triangle. They noted though that the same thing happens every time one of these objects shows up. NASA declines to comment, and the live feed shuts down. It's not just everyday people who have expressed their interest in this topic. Some astronauts have been quite vocal about what's been reported. Dr. Brian O'Leary, former NASA astronaut, said the following. There is abundant evidence that we're being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, that their appearance is bizarre from any kind of traditional materialistic Western point of view that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness. They use toroids. They use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems. They seem to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. Gordon Cooper has also commented on these mysterious objects. Major Gordon Cooper has been part of a number of top secret missions in space with several revolving around the use of highly advanced technologies to locate locations of interest. Interestingly, during one of his many space missions, he'd claimed to come into contact with an extraterrestrial craft. During Gordon Cooper's space mission, that included a solo journey with a planned 22 orbit trip around the Earth, he claimed to have seen a glowing object that appeared to be a bright green and it began to slowly approach his spacecraft as he viewed it through the porthole. Additionally, the approach of the object was also picked up by the tracking station located in Australia, confirming Cooper's encounter. This would lead to the astronauts eventually agreeing to take on a two-day mission, in which he would work to analyse footage and evidence of extraterrestrial visitations that would eventually lead him to giving a speech to the United Nations to discuss his findings. During his speech, he described later coming across evidence of extraterrestrial crafts, going on to say the following, I saw with my own eyes a defined air of ground being consumed by flames, with four indentations left by a flying object, which had descended in the middle of a field. Beings had left the craft. There were other traces to prove this. They seemed to have studied topography, they had collected soil samples and eventually they returned to where they'd come from, disappearing at enormous speed. Gordon Cooper would later go on to be a key figure in the awareness movement, 
and claimed that his studies and findings were being covered up by the United States government, under the claim that it was a national security threat for inciting panic. Despite his many years of working for the government and assisting with efforts during many secret missions, Edgar Mitchell was the sixth person to walk on the moon's surface. He piloted the Apollo 14 lunar module, the first Apollo mission attempting to carry out scientific experiments on the moon. He pursued a military career, joining the U.S. Navy as a pilot in 1948, and was selected by NASA in 1966 to become an astronaut. However, it was towards the end of Mitchell's career, and after his retirement, that he became the focus of discussion about the potentially paranormal events that occur in space, and those that he himself had experienced. It was during the Apollo 14 mission, unbeknownst to the world, that things began to get a little weird with Edgar Mitchell. After experiencing what he described as a spirit above creation, Mitchell became ever more interested in the paranormal phenomena and consciousness. He began to conduct ESP experiments, experimenting with psychic abilities such as telepathy, and this was on board the Apollo 14 module. Chillingly, Mitchell's experience did seem to have an effect on him. He and a group of psychics later alleged that they shared mental communications whilst he was in orbit. He later founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which continued the experiments he had been conducting in private and in space. During his lifetime, Mitchell consistently testified to the existence of UFOs. In 1996, in an interview on the American TV program Dateline, Mitchell stated that UFO contact is very strong, and that the US government was covering up visits and crashes. Over the past five years, a worrying number of US officials, diplomats, soldiers and intelligence officers have come down with a mysterious illness. All of the US diplomats documented the same symptoms, which range from memory loss, loss of hearing, headaches, loss of balance, fatigue and ringing in the ears. The mysterious illness has affected some more than others, with some officials even going on to suffer long-term brain damage. It's gotten to the point that the Pentagon and the Central Intelligence Agency has got involved, saying that it looks like these officials are being singled out and attacked. An investigation by the State Department said the likely cause is that of a direct energy weapon. Some of these attacks happened in places that don't have the best security, but the Central Intelligence Agency has said the two incidents have occurred near the White House. One of the most recent reports happened on the 17th of May 2021. What's worrying is that the United States' best intelligence have no idea who is controlling this direct energy weapon, what they are doing with it and where it's coming from. The Pentagon has now said they plan to create a sensor that can be worn by US diplomats, and this will help identify where the attacks are coming from. One of the main questions is who is operating these direct energy weapons. A recent study showed US intelligence that over 150 people have reported being attacked by these energy weapons, with them pretty much having all the same symptoms. The incident soon got the name of Havana Syndrome, and this is because it first appeared in Havana, which is in Cuba and this happened back in 2016. The State Department soon received complaints from over 21 employees of the US Embassy, all reporting that they had come down with the same symptoms, including memory problems, loss of balance, loss of hearing fatigue, and ringing in the ears. At first, officials didn't take the report seriously, and this caused some to make complaints to the Central Intelligence Agency, asking them to investigate the cause further. US officials then looked to Cuba, and asked if they had any involvement with the mysterious direct energy attacks, but they denied these claims. Other US diplomats who have travelled to places like China and Russia have also reported the same symptoms causing US security to think that these countries may be involved. A former senior Central Intelligence Officer, Mark Polymeropoulos, suddenly came down ill while being in Moscow back in 2017. He said the following, I was woken up in the middle of the night with an incredible case of vertigo. 
My head was spinning. Incredible nausea. I felt like I had to go to the bathroom and throw up. It was just a terrifying moment for me. I had tinnitus which was ringing in my ears and the vertigo really was what was incredibly debilitating and I really wasn't sure what was happening. I couldn't stand up. I was falling over. Rather worryingly he went on to say that to this day he still has these symptoms, saying that it's been years now and that it's so bad that he had to retire from the Central Intelligence Agency because of this mysterious illness. He carried on with the following. I had a lot more to offer. I was 50 but I had to retire because of these headaches. They don't go away. End quote. This study also showed that other US officials have complained of similar instances, and some of these officials were even pulled from countries like China because they could no longer work. The attacks are still being reported, with the White House workers saying that they were buzzed and have now fallen ill. It's gotten so bad that Congress has now said this is a national security threat and that something needs to be done in order to protect US officials. Security personnel then turned to the National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine in the hopes that they would be able to get to the bottom of what's going on. They had an answer. They said that directed pulsed radio frequency energy was behind the attacks. According to a New York Times analysis, who looked into the accounts and what has been happening over the past few years, they said that the language is very interesting and that using words like pulsed and directed shows this isn't being caused by random energy from things like cell phones or other devices and shows that this is a direct energy weapon being used to attack people and it's showing that whoever is using this is clearly working. Some of these reports were leaked from the Central Intelligence Agency, and as of right now Congress are being careful with their wording. Senator Susie Collins said the following, There's a mysterious direct energy weapon that's being used, and it's causing in some cases permanent traumatic brain injury. End quote. As of right now, US officials are trying to track down who's responsible for these attacks, and the going idea as of right now is that Russian officials are behind what's going on. Although, as expected, they've denied having any involvement. Various declassified documents have shown us that the US and Russia have attacked each other in some way or another, whether being physical or through things like cybercrime. President Biden has said that President Trump didn't take these seriously, and that he will be the one to get to the bottom of his reports. He said that he looked to the Central Intelligence Agency, and they've told him that they will get to the bottom of whoever is doing this. CIA Director William Burns said these attacks were of high priority. One of the countries that has made good advancements in direct energy weapons is that of China, with officials releasing videos and images of their latest tech. The power of these lasers is impressive, with them saying that they can cause injury to humans and that they can easily knock things like drones out of the sky. One Chinese official said these weapons are being used on things like the borders and said that these direct energy weapons can take effect within seconds. Although it's important to note that Chinese officials have said it's not them attacking US diplomats. So what do you make of these direct energy weapons? Who do you think is behind them? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.